That's it. Like, hello, oh, welcome. Guys, guys. It's the man. It's the one. <laughs> Michael Hardy. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Diamonds in the Rough podcast. I'm your host, Declan Peterson. I'm joined by my man, Mike Frickin' Hardy. Hello, Mike, how are we doing? How, how are you? Doing? How are oh, you? I'm, doing. I'm, I'm great, man. Great to have you here. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Where are you at right now? Um, I'm currently house? in my bedroom in uh, New Jersey. New Jersey. What time are we talking? Uh, Warren. It's the best, best city and the best state in the Union. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay. I'll have to visit them sometime. Shout out to Warren. So, Mike, uh, why don't you introduce yourself, like where you go to school and kind of some of your uh, your background in athletics. Yeah, sure. Uh, So, obviously, my name is Mike. I go to uh, Franciscan University in Steubenville. Um, I play baseball there. Uh, As for background in in athletics, I've done quite the amount of sports. Uh, I started playing baseball in second grade. I was pretty good at it. I played that up until eighth grade and then seventh eighth grade I played football but in high school i got uh, kicked off the football team because i didn't attend their high school so uh you because, you to explain that yeah so um i wanted to play i wanted to play i want to play football because i like it was it was in the summer it's like what you start doing and uh, spoke to my my athletic director, and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, like, I, you should be good to go. Just like, just get the practice times and roll up." So I basically just walked on the field, and they started like getting the hang of me, getting used to me. And then I was, next thing you know, I was on the I was on the, the football team. But the problem was I never got my physical in, mm. so I had to go to the nurse to go uh, get a physical. And turns out I wasn't in their system. And then she complained to the athletic director of the school. And the athletic director kicked me off the team. Wow. So, <laughs> yeah, right? you get your physicals in, I guess. Like, yeah, jeez. Yeah. I was so mad. You want to hear how mad I was? I was yeah. so mad. I joined the cross country team. Wow, probably the one of the worst things you could do for baseball. <laughs> worst decision, worst <laughs> decision I've ever made. Ah, oh, jeez. I, I was running around. I, I, I was, I was like, all right, I did. Like, I wasn't bad. I was, I was on varsity, starting varsity. It was like top five finishers on the team, but um, I was started doing laps. And like, if I didn't feel like running, I would go and use the bathroom and just sit there for. A <laughs> oh, jeez! Cross country, cross country, man. It's it's people. Some people love it. Some most people really don't. Yeah, but no, uh, that's a tough one. That's one I have not experienced. I will admit. Yeah, it's not it's <laughs> not that fun. But um, on top of that, I also I played basketball in high school. Uh, I joined the basketball team actually, just so I could do a backflip at the pep rally. Sick. So, Pep rally was a big thing. I was like, oh, I just want to go up there and just pull a back loop in front of everyone. And then I started I started doing it. It turns out I was actually pretty good at it. And then uh, I um, I made to varsity by my freshman year. And it was like, I basically, it was pretty actually amazing because I only I, it was the first time I touched the basketball and I was good enough to make it to varsity. And then um, junior year, I made MVP. And uh, senior year, my coach hated me, so I didn't really get that much playing time. But every now and then, I would do it. <laughs> No, it was so annoying. Like, I would literally would drop, like, there was, like, a time I had, like, a hot streak, right? I was, like, dropping, like, 20 a game, which, like, at the time, like, I, I'm not, I'm not like, anything amazing, obviously. I'm, pl- uh, I'm not playing basketball in college. But, like, I was doing pretty well, and he was just all up in my business because he was, like, oh, like, I guess, like, he wanted something more. I was, like, all right, like, screw you, man. But, uh, <laughs> I was also 10th in the state of New Jersey in steals. That's kind of my, my mark to fame. Oh yeah. yeah, love that. Yeah, that's what I like to hear. So, what what year was that? That was senior year. Senior year, I was tenth in steals. Nice man. Oh no, no, junior. No, junior, year I was tenth. Junior, steals. when you were MVP too. Got it. I was MVP. That was that was my blow up season. Nice man. Yeah, and so, then and then, uh, hold it. Sorry, what? No, no, go for it. Oh, uh, um, and then so, a lot of my dream was always to play baseball in college, just because like I grew up at a young age playing baseball. And my mom told me, it was like, oh, you pray every single day from freshman to senior year. And I promise you, God will let you play baseball in college. So then I came to Franciscan. And I was like, oh, they don't have a baseball team. Oh, well, I guess I'll play rugby. So yeah, so I talk about rugby. Baseball. So I played rugby for a semester. And it was it's a great sport. Rugby is a lot of fun. And then it turns out uh, Franciscan, uh, they got baseball back the year I was there, which is crazy to think about. 
and it's amazing how God works. But unbelievable. That's, yeah, uh, that's how we roll. <laughs> well, that's an amazing story, honestly. Um, so you said uh, your freshman year is when Franciscan brought their baseball team back, right? To yeah, practice. Right. Yeah, it was like a club. They had like sp- spring practices and stuff. Okay, and now they're me and you obviously play at Franciscan, and they're you know well established now Division three baseball team. Even though we had this Corona shortened season, yeah, um, yeah we, we established it pretty well in the first. In the first yeah, I was gonna say, what was your, what were your thoughts of your first experience playing college ball this year? First experience, all right. So like, I never played in high school, so like the jump from little league to college it's a big jump it's a big jump. oh yeah i mean from high school to college for me personally was uh was a huge jump uh i can only imagine from little league to college man yeah exactly and like and on top of that i also like i also i'm not gonna lie i think even deck can attest this i really stunk <laughs> like i had a lot <laughs> i had a lot of improvement to make but i knew i knew hey, I we all do yeah yeah but i mean well some more than others. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> yeah, I, had, I think I had like more errors than outs. <laughs> so, what, and what position do you play, Mike? Um, I was playing. They had me in the outfield. Outfield. What's what are you most comfortable at? Would you say outfield or what position? Uh, I thought outfield, but then I realized it's kind of. Maybe not. Maybe not outfield. <laughs> <laughs> maybe we'll put it, maybe pitch. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I, I was actually I was, I was noticed I was getting a lot better at pitching as the season went on. And actually, this actually goes back to the the spring when we started having as a club and practices. Um, and the coach was saying that he's never saw anyone like improve as much as I did in in a matter of a month because I went from like nothing to like 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 one of the better guys practicing. So I mean, a lot of it also like there was a lot of other factors this semester, but. Like I was, I was super excited to get back to practicing and really get on the grind. Nice, yeah. What have been like the differences? Would you say from that first like club, uh, kind of like practice type season to to this year, this and this spring? What were the differences? Yeah, biggest differences. Biggest difference? Yeah. Um. Well, obviously, because I was, they had me at second base, which I got, I got, uh, I don't, I got booted for good reason. <laughs> <laughs> um. No, but the big difference, obviously, like you have more people, so you have more things going on. They, uh, you have the uh, more coaches, more staff. It, it, it's more, it, it's more established. That's with that, for lack of a better word, it's more established. It's more like an actual practice as opposed to like a almost like a private workout. Yeah. Which, which they're both great. They're both great in their own ways. But it's just, it, it was just like it's a different, different atmosphere. Gotcha. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and it's um, a lot. Of, there's a lot of walk-ons then. And then yeah. A majority dropped it. A majority, a majority dropped. From that first, uh, like, spring club experience, you said? Yeah. 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 I think only three guys did, st- or four guys stuck with it. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so what was your, even though, like I said, we only uh, got about, what did we get, 11 games in this year? Yeah, something like that. Um, what was your, your favorite experience, would you say, from this from this season? Favorite experience? Or, or a couple if you got some. I know we got some good stories. If yeah, there's any yeah, you yeah, care yeah, to yeah. share uh, I mean, it, it, with the boys. Oh, yeah, we're talking like with the boys, like boys of baseball, or we're talking like like in a game? Both, both. Both? All right, okay. Yeah, both. They, they, they could be the same thing, but obviously there's a difference between the two, so I'll give two. Yeah, yeah. Um, with the boys in baseball, I'll start with that. I'll save the best one for last. Or the, the right. best one for last. Oh, um, yeah. So the boys of baseball. I got a bunch – when we were in Florida, we had a day off. We got a bunch of guys to go to the beach. And me and this guy, Nick Briley, just started walking around, <laughs> just walking down the beach, and we started talking to some guy about fishing. It was just – it was, like, great. Like, it got yeah. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> that was – that you... was – yeah, that was one of my favorite parts. Definitely. Did you happen to use my aloe vera, or was that – did you I, take I, any or no? I, I, know, I, I know Nick definitely did. I think I manned up. All right. Yeah, very good. You took it like a champ. Yeah, no, I just manned up and just took took the burn. Very good. Um, and then let's see, the baseball experience. Um, yeah, I mean, on the obviously, field. obviously, I think it was easy to say was our first win. Yeah, I think I think everyone can kind of attest to it. Came out Ryan Neely came out shut out. That was yeah, that was amazing. amazing. And we came out was pretty pretty hot. And then, um, I mean, obviously led into the second game where we lost off a uh, hit by pitch. 
But yeah, that was tough. It, it did. It did. Like that was that was probably one of the best baseball experiences. That was just a good time. Good time right off the bat. Like basically setting the program standard, and we came out shutout win. Oh, it doesn't get much better than that. That was great, dude. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. I know the one thing, the two things that stand out for me personally were uh, my first hit that I had that year. I had a, I hit a double, which was um, my first actual hit in like my collegiate career, uh, like for NCAA, which is pretty crazy for me. So that was a really big really? moment when I came in. Yeah, um, because my my first year at my school, I didn't play a ton, um, and I only got one actual at bat, and I got walked. And then my sophomore year, I got injured. Um, so I lost the, the whole season and I wasn't back until like the, the summer of last year. And then this year getting that first hit was, I didn't even know that I got it either. I, I thought it was going to be a for sure fly out. I just went over his head. So for me, one, I scored that. That was the first run that we had that scored. Was against Christenum, right? Yeah. Against Christenum. And that was the first run scored for Franciscan in nine years. And for me, my first uh, hit technically um, for division three baseball. So, so for me, that was a big moment. And then the second thing that stands out was um, I went in and played – I think I played – I went in and played short for two innings, didn't get any action. Then I go to second base, and I did a hidden run with two strikes and one out. Dude hits about a 79 hopper to my left as I'm covering the bag on a righty hitter, and the guy gets the third because the ball just keeps on squeaking by because I'm running this way to cover second base. Do you remember that? Oh, yeah, I do, actually, yeah. That was the last I, inning. Oh, I, my gosh. I remember that went by Scott, and I was like, move, Scott, move, and he didn't move quick enough. I was like, oh, my gosh. Gosh, dude, it was such a terrible feeling. I felt so bad. Uh, also, on top of that, when because I had DH the first game and then most of the second game, and when I, when I went into short and the, the crowd was just screaming and the lights were, were just, like, blazing and the music was going, I was like, wow. Like, this is big time. Like, Barron's baseball is back, man. That's what I'm saying. The, the big, I think the, one of the big things you have to realize about like pretty much any sport, and especially like going to college, like somebody I've noticed, but like in rugby, you have to use that like nervousness it, because everyone's watching could easily turn into the most, for lack of a better word, hype atmosphere you could think of. If you can, yeah. If you can convert that, you can literally. That's what made like Deion Sanders, um, Barry Bonds, any uh, people that even like today, like uh, like OBJ, like they kind of like just take a swagger from the from the spotlight. Yeah, so they just yeah. Take that's 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 something that's very essential in old, pretty much all sports. Yeah, no, that's one hundred percent true. Like turning that that nervousness and trying to direct it and turn it into like positive energy. Yeah, you know what I mean, you know, being able to take that because especially when you're in those big situations, you know, it's really easy to get caught up in. Like guys always say, and I hate this term, is have the game speed up. Um, and that's what they use as a term a lot of times in baseball. But it's, like, very true. when it, at, Like, usually there's, you know, 10, 15, 20 seconds in between each pitch. But being able to, like, control your breath and harness that energy. But at the same time, it's, like, uh, it's a fine line between, like, overthinking it, um, being able to, like, process that and use it as energy so that you can perform at the best of your ability and then also just being an athlete and not thinking. So you got to find like that fine line, at least for me, like between overthinking it and like just attack mode. You know what I mean? I, see, I I would even disagree with that. Uh, Why? I, I know, I know. I think Carve says the best was uh, keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, that's our head baseball coach at Franciscan Rick Carver. Yeah, we'll give him a shout out. Yeah, he says kiss, <laughs> kiss, kiss it. You got to keep it simple, stupid. Yeah. And I think I think a lot of this is what all the great if you look at all the great athletes like the '86 Bears or the um, the Browns Barry Bonds what they did is they just went off instinct, right? And yeah, if it I maybe everyone's different. Some people like to think about it and they just tackle it. For me, an instinct if you just let yourself like think, oh, I like this atmosphere. I like what's going on. I'm going to do great. Uh, Bryce Harper he does it actually great. He just basically just does what comes naturally to him, and it makes the, like these athletes so much better as an athlete. If you just go do what comes instinctly to you, and it's yeah. something I realized, like when I like when I joined the rugby team or when I was in basketball, like for the first time, literally picking up, like you literally just gotta let your instinct take over. Yeah, no, I agree with that uh, to a certain extent. Like for me personally, um, when I go to hit, before I go to hit, I do like to analyze. Like I always like I'm always. Whoever the pitch starter is, I'm always asking what pitch they're throwing, what they throw when they get ahead, what they throw when they get behind. 
Um, and a lot of times I'll sit a, a pitch, even a zone sometimes too. Um, but then once I step in the box, I like know my plan of attack and everything just has to go. Like it's well, full-blown instinct mode for me personally. But then on the defensive side, it's a lot less thinking. It just reacts, especially in the infield for me. It just react or else I overthink it. No, yeah, I, I, uh, I, I, there's a big difference because like there's overthinking is really when you focus on yourself and you think about it. So like, for example, what you're doing when you go up to bat is you're analyzing, you're thinking, <laughs> you're, you're attacking head on, right? And that's yeah. good. That's really good. That's also part of instinct, right? Is to be able to use your mind and use your instinct and bring it together. But now when you start overthinking, it's like when you go up and you realize, oh, like I'm in a slump, let me try mixing it up. And then all of a sudden you like start like changing up things and it just gets worse and worse and worse. And that could actually like ruin your, basically your ability to get hot again later on. It's when you just really try to churn the bucket. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, that's where the, the lines, like that's where the, the fine line is crossed is when you start thinking about yourself as opposed to the actual uh, task at hand. That's a good, that's a really good point. Thinking about, say that again. What did you say again? So thinking like, about yourself versus the task at hand. Yeah, exactly. That's a really, really good point that you put there. Yeah. Cause if you notice like uh, when you like, let's say you're in the outfield and instead of like, Oh, the ball's over there. Let me get it. You're thinking like, Oh, should I put my glove? This, 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 that uncertainty yeah. literally always causes mistakes. That's how people in basically in at least in any – I'm speaking for rugby. It's how you get hurt in rugby is that if you don't know, like, oh, should I tackle, should I tackle, that is when people get concussed. That's when people get injured. That's when people get hurt is when you just yeah. don't know what to do. And that's why you just – you have to analyze and attack and with instinct as opposed to just thinking, oh, am I doing it right? Gosh, yeah, I, I had an old trainer named Courtney Johnson. He played he played college football, and I believe he played up in Canada, actually, played football. But that's the one thing he said is when guys would be hesitant or uncertain, especially in practice, that's when guys would get hurt. It wouldn't be when they're going full force, um, kind of relating it back to what you were saying about rugby. It's when they would be in that kind of, like, gray area is when guys would get injured. Yeah, yeah. And it, it's, it's, it's sometimes very hard to do, especially when you're in a slump. Yeah, no, and for me personally, it's uh, like hitting. I mean, a lot of people say it's the hardest thing you can do in sports. I definitely agree. I'm not sure what your thoughts are on. I mean, it's pretty, pretty hard, pretty difficult. I've got a collegiate hit, so <laughs> <laughs> I, think I agree with you. Yeah, no, it's it's very difficult, um, especially at the college level. I know for me, it was a big jump, like I said, from high school to college. And for me, it's some days. Uh, Things don't feel exactly right or say like my swing. Um, I'm usually a guy that has a, a little barrel tilt up and sometimes it just that doesn't feel good today. So I'll tweak it a little bit, but I'm not completely changing up my whole stance. It's just minor things here and there. And that's one thing that I've gotten away from. I used to completely overhaul my stance in between games um, and my body just didn't know what to do after all the muscle memory doing the same thing over and over again uh, with the same basic mechanics. And then going into uh, like robot mode and completely overhauling my swing uh, and my setup and even my approach and just completely rethinking it. And there's just too many things. And you can't get to that instinct mode that makes uh, those great athletes perform at the best of their ability. So yeah. that's one thing that I've definitely learned. No, yeah, there's, there's a lot to be learned. And it's it's something that you can't really teach through words, if, I, if, if that's the right way to put it. You can inspire people to do it. Yeah. But you actually, it, that's something that just takes practice. It's yeah, do you have to, would you say you have to just experience that? So the Giants coach, new coach, Joe Judge, I think he actually, he, he said something that kind of, kind of stuck with me. He said that coaches, this, this all ties together, but coaches actually don't really, they shouldn't be teaching, uh, or maybe not, not teaching. They sh yeah, they shouldn't be teaching a fundamental player a new thing. They should take the fundamentals that they have and expand them, right? Mm. So this kind of goes into what we were talking about, about overthinking and um, basically kind of you're, you're trying to add something new that shouldn't be new, right? So a, a, a way to coach yourself is take what you have and make it better as opposed to uh, take what you have and add something else to it. And I think – does that answer your question? Yeah, that's really well said, man. 100%. Yeah. I think kind of, I don't know if that directly relates to that, but something that, that just brought up in my mind is something that I heard when I was 
maybe in middle school playing baseball. Um, and that was that you have to be your own best coach. And I want to see like what your thoughts are on that. I know for me personally, uh, something that I, I relayed to a lot of the guys on the team was, Hey man, like whatever your coach is saying or whatever, like they're expecting out of you at the end of the day, you're the player and they're the coach. You can do whatever you want. And, and they can't nitpick, especially if we have 30, 40 guys, every single thing. I know what we have five coaches at Franciscan, yeah. but they can't see every little detail, especially when we're going really fast paced, like most of our practices are. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to be your own best coach and self-evaluate. And that goes from everything from your, your mindset to what you eat before practice, how you recover, um, how your swing's feeling, what little not mechanical overhauls, but little tinkering things that you can do to make yourself uh, square up the ball better, or hit the ball harder or further. Um, but that's that's just what I, I have to say about like oh, that. Yeah, so I it, wanted to get your your uh, opinion on that. Yeah, it's it's one hundred percent true. It's one hundred percent true. Uh, and like I'm saying for the person who's pretty diversified in a lot of sports, right? Baseball, rugby, uh, football, like base a lot of sports. You do actually have to be able to do, do like put in the time to mentally coach yourself right and a big part of that is mental reps i would say is yeah. that that you coach coach can give you information but you actually have to take that information and apply it to yourself if that makes sense so like let's say let's say i tell you every single day something basic keep your eye on the ball right keep your eye on the ball keep your eye on the ball keep your eye on the ball, the ball yes yeah it's like baseball baseball basics right yeah you'd hear that all day and a coach could tell you all day and you cannot do it once right but you actually have to take that information that, that he told you, and all of a sudden you have to do something that kind of feels a bit awkward, right? Like looking at the ball all the way to the bat, as Pete Rose would say. But it, it feels awkward, and then that's where the coaching really begins. Is you gotta you gotta knock the you gotta create that muscle memory. You gotta gotta put in the time, and that's I, I, that's what I'm saying. I think I agree with you 100 percent when it comes to being your own best coach. Yeah, no, definitely. I think that's something that uh, a lot of guys going into college don't quite realize. Um, and going on to my next point, I would say, what is some, after you've played, you know, both uh, collegiate rugby and baseball now, what is some advice you would give for, for some college athletes or any any lessons or a couple tidbits you'd like to pass on to guys that are maybe juniors, seniors in high school, something that they need to know before they go off to college? Lessons? All right. So I think lesson number one would be team first and that's something that's something that's really hard especially in baseball yeah is that you actually have to you have to be able to like when you're feeling down when you're feeling down you cannot act down right you have to be able to put the team first and literally something like your like your your bodily expressions so let's say i struck out and i come into the the dugout and i'm like oh like man like try to throw and stuff everywhere a temper tantrum you can't be doing that because guess what it, it I'm saying from our like from our team, I saw a lot of times is that what happens is we start off great, temper tantrum comes, and then all of a sudden the whole team feeds off that, feeds off the leaders of the team especially, and they just they go belly up, and it yeah. drags down the entire team, which is something that baseball's baseball's a, a lot about vibes, right? It's about oh I'm feeling good, guess what I perform good. If I feel bad, there's a 99% chance you're gonna. You're gonna <laughs> You're gonna play. You're gonna play bad if you feel. Sometimes, bad. yes. Yeah, and sometimes you feel. Sometimes you feel crappy, and you still play awesome, and, and vice versa. But exactly. Yes. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, for no, the most part. Little one percent. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Yeah. All right, Mr. Peterson. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, yeah, but the big thing is you got to you got to put your team first, and I think the biggest way to do that is to always like, especially in baseball, be positive, right? Yeah. And if you notice the the biggest. The biggest moments where a team kind of turns, right, and they kind of flick a switch in a game is, at least from my experience, a good example is best player on the team gets injured and he wants to come out and he goes, guys, like, win this for me because I can't do this, right? That is one of the, from, from my experience, I know a guy, he was like, went D1. He did that to us and we, like, blew out the doors, right? And now that is a prime example. Give me a little bit of goosebumps just thinking about that. Yeah, exactly. Like, that, that's a prime example of good leadership. Good atmosphere, and we played like we were obviously a man down, our best man, but we were able to come back. And like he still led, he led into something like a small action, like him, his want to like to, his want to keep going, and his not little temper tantrum. The temper tantrum, uh, temper tantrum pisses me off. It pisses me off. I can't. Yeah, say no, a hundred percent for me. Uh, 
a lot of great stuff that you brought up. Uh, first thing I wanted to say was uh, what you talked about, like the positivity um, and talking about trying to more the uh, you know, the cliche phrase, like we over me or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, for me, I, I remember telling you this because, um, you know, a, a lot of games I was like starting off at DH and when you're designated hitter, like, what are you supposed to do? You're supposed to freaking hit. Mm-hmm. And I told you, uh, I forget, what were you yelling? You were yelling some crazy stuff from the dugout. But, man, when I'd be up at that, baby, Akuna Matata. Akuna Matata. And, uh, man, dude, I told you, I'm like, wow, that really just helps me, especially because I played outfield this year for the first time, you know, for the most part since high school and into college. I've mainly been a middle infielder, primar- primarily a shortstop the past year or so. Mm-hmm. And to go out to the outfield, especially, like, I was, I was nervous, man. And – having you guys on the bench just rally uh, and keep that like positive vibe, like you said, was just unreal for me. I never realized how important that was. And uh, I think part of that for me was I had a really tough time. I was always like worried about like what's best for me. Like, what do I have to do? What do I have to do? And this was the first year that I really started thinking like, Hey, like what does a team need? Like, what do I need to do for them? And it was the, for me, it was really difficult to, come to the fact that, hey, man, like, I've been a selfish player most of my life. It wasn't really until, like, the past year or so that I was like, man, like, I need to put the team ahead of myself, especially, like you said, in baseball. It's such an individualized sport because of statistics and, you know, yeah. especially when you're hitting one guy at a time, it's it's really tough uh, to think about it in a team approach. But this was definitely the first year that I put the team ahead of myself. And ironically, it's also the best statistical season that I've had in quite a while and the best that I was playing defensively and offensively. Um, so that's just something that I think, I don't know, a lot of guys need to, to re- reconsider, especially at their, their college level or whatever university yeah. that they're at, um, if they really are playing for the team or themselves. You know, it's really tough. Mm-hmm. There's a, a – I forget. There's some philosopher who, who wrote about this. I, I, I'm not I, – I, I write a lot of philosophy because I think it's really interesting. But he was saying that if basically he was he basically went to like the mathematical explanation about how to make the world a better place or how to, or in this case it would be how to make the team a better atmosphere. If if everybody put others before themselves, right? Like just think about it, there's three of us. Yeah. I put I put I I I put I don't know I put like a I put 100 percent to my to my teams right I put 100 percent to my friends. If we all did that, us three. We would get, I guess, like for uh, down what two hundred percent would be, but we get two hundred percent, right? Now, if yeah. I'm giving everything I have to myself, I can only get, I can only get so far, and that's that's why it's it's so big to put your teammates first. Is mm. because you, if everybody gives a little, you get so much more. Yeah, no, I I hundred percent believe in that. There's one other funny story I wanted to uh, to point after and. Uh, this is definitely like a testament of you putting the team ahead of yourself. I remember uh, you just picking me up, you and Roddy. And, big Bod uh, Rod. Big Bod Rod. And it was against, I remember first at bat, I went uh, I went double off the right center fence. And then off the same pitcher, I have a runner on second. Like, I'm feeling good. And, like, I know, like, this guy, he throws me a couple nasty sliders. I'm like, all right, all I got to do is just hit the ball to the other side. Like, get, get Burke to third so we can get that go-ahead run. And uh, he threw, I forget, I think he threw me another, either a changeup or another slider, and I swung at it. I'm like, oh, crap. Drop third strike. I get the guy over to third base, and I come in the dugout. Usually I'd be like, man, I just blew it. Could have got another RBI. You know, thinking about myself. But yeah. then I thought about it as I was coming in, and I passed Carver, and, like, he wasn't pissed or anything. I'm like, I was trying to get the guy to third. I did my job. And I'm like, all right, yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And then, and then, and then, and then, next step at you go up and you you find the barrel and you know hit a ball really hard. So that's for, definitely for me where I was like, wow, like that's contagious. And I think that's something that everyone needs to know is that is really contagious. Um, also, putting the team ahead of yourself. Right, so let's take that moment. Notice like the two the two options you have. Okay. Yeah. You have it's the a choice. Like, yeah, you have like the I did my job or I got out. Like, right? They are two opposite things. And it happiness is a choice. And along this, positive vibes is a choice. Right? Yes. You actually have to pick. You, you have two options. That I can drown in my own, like, my, like, it's not perfection. Or I can, like, I can take what I got. I can be an optimistic. And it will literally, it, it's very obvious which one will boost the morale of the team. 
Right. It's something in baseball, morale is huge. Yeah, no, that's – especially, I mean, obviously it's a game of failure, dude. Like, you fail – yeah. Six, seven times out of ten, and you're freaking amazing at hitting. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, that just makes no sense at all. Um, and I think guys just need to realize that, that uh, as they're coming to the box. But at the same time, you got to stay positive, like you said. Um, I'd like to get your thoughts kind of going off uh, failing six out of seven times. Are there any different um, strategies that you use or that you have used, whether it was in – High school or uh, college playing lacrosse or not lacrosse? Sorry, rugby or baseball. Uh, whoa, 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 whoa! Don't put that on me. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, any different strategies you've you've used to cope with failure? Because I know for me personally, um, I usually take it pretty pretty tough. But I wanted to get your take on it before I share mine. Okay. This is just like kind of the way I also live my life. I don't know if you've noticed, but. Sorry, I'm sorry. Give me a second. Pack, you gotta get out. Yeah. I'm one of nine in a smaller you. house, so there's no personal space. What was the question? Uh, I was. We were talking about um, different strategies in order to um, bounce back or how to handle failure and uh, or fail forward. I guess we could say. Fail how forward. To fail, yeah, forward. How to fail forward. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the biggest trick, and this, this, I mean, I think it goes with life. He's got to take everything very lightheartedly. Right. If yeah. You put so much into one thing. And it doesn't come your way, you literally lose everything. Okay, it's kind of you kind of gotta don't really put that much. Like obviously put your full heart into it, but like you can't. Like I'm, I'm not saying like don't try, but I'm saying don't get like as worked up where it will affect you for the next week. Yeah, because that that's hundred no, percent. So like for example, yeah. um, I'm trying to see what's a good example. Uh. Uh, when I was playing, when I was playing basketball, right, I, I tore up. No, so I partially tore my quad, right. It was like Oof. the first injury I've ever had, and it's like still to this day the only injury I've really ever had. But I remember I, I came off a screen, hit my thigh, and I just felt the pain, and I just limped over it when it like went my to the leg. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then so I got bad advice about how to treat it, and I ended up just get, making it so much worse. Oh, right. nice. So, and they were like, all right, like, you're going to be out for the rest of the season. Now, that that is a very obvious point where I could just, like, be depressed and everything. But what actually ended up happening, and I, I kind of, like, took what you said very late, lightheartedly. I didn't really take the whole thing seriously. It didn't really affect my grades in high school at all. I w it was able to kind of rehab quickly enough where I was able actually able to make it for the, for the final games of the season where – a lot of things happen, but like for example, we were down twenty points in the fourth quarter, and I dropped like fifteen in the fourth quarter to bring us to overtime. And another example is also uh, getting kicked off the football team. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, really, I really didn't feel bad at it about it at all. Like I, I literally was like, ah, oh, shoot, man. Like I guess we're kicked off, and it just like that is What's something. Next? Yeah, What's it, next? Yeah. You know, it really stunk because I was able to play baseball in high school because I wasn't able to play football. I. I I played cross country. All right, I went from baseball and football to cross country. Ah, oh, that's like just going downhill, you know what man. I'm saying that that's something very depressing for, for baseball players, at least. I mean, that's just ah. Oh. Yeah, that's literally just like I I basically accepted hell. <laughs> <laughs> I, oh jeez. I took it very lightheartedly, right? It didn't really affect me that much, and here I am playing baseball in college now. Like that's awesome. Yeah, no, that's that's pretty crazy. I know for me, uh. That was definitely me. Uh, my junior year, I, I got injured in high school, and I missed most of my uh, spring baseball season. And that one I did not take well. Um, and I definitely got, like, super sad and, like, depressed and just felt sorry for myself. And I was like, you know, screw the world, like, F this, F that. And uh, I had a terrible outlook, and it took me a while to get back from that. Um, I did all the rehab, worked my butt off, but it was just hard for me mentally to get back into the swing of things um, on the ball field. But then my sophomore year, uh, my last year at my old school at Concordia University of Chicago, I got injured um, and I missed most of the season as well. But I thought about it. I remember when we got back, back as happened during our Florida trip. And I thought, man, I got like two choices. Like I could like either go like I have been back in high school or well, let's use this like opportunity um to get better at something else so i totally changed my training approach 
because I got to the point where I was like, all right, I feel like I'm not getting better from the weight room and I'm just getting so beat up in there and I'm not really seeing many benefits. So I obviously need to change something up. And that's when I found the 90 mile per hour formula by Josh Sheenan. And I totally started changing up my lifting approach. I started watching a lot more baseball. I started connecting with more uh, the baseball people, either on Instagram or YouTube, Twitter. And I just started learning and asking more questions. Like that's one thing I was always hesitant to do was ask older guys that had success or were at the level that I wanted to be at to ask them questions um, about how they got there, what they're thinking. Like, hey, like, what's your approach on this kind of pitcher? Like, what are you thinking in this situation? How do you – uh, you know, feel this kind of ground ball or this kind of hop, stuff like that, that I just never would have thought to do if I didn't have that injury. And because of that, I'm here a little bit over a year later, and I was on the way to definitely one of my best seasons, definitely my best season in, in quite a while, um, and definitely my best one in college. Um, but, yeah, that's kind of interesting what you said, kind of taking it lightheartedly. Um, I think that's some advice that – People like myself, if you can be really good at self-evaluation, I know that I take things way too serious a lot of the time. And that can be, that can be great because I'm super determined and type A, like got to get this stuff done. And, but at the same time, when things don't go my way, like it's, it's like, like I'm going to blow up and it's like the end of the world. And something that I've gotten better at is being able, like I said, to self-evaluate and say, all right, like got to make the best of it. Like move on, see what's next see what I can do to make the best out of the situation instead exactly. of just moping. Exactly, exactly. 100%. Yeah, 100%, man. 100%, 100%. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like freaking Hardy. Man, oh, man, baby. Daddy Dick. <laughs> Where do I even go after that? Um, the questions. Q&A, baby. Yeah, I guess I would say um, start winding this down a little bit. Uh what uh what are your plans would you say for for after college or if you thought that far yet um so i'm a computer science major um i i can get a job lined up very easily um i i have have very good connections in near the new york city area so um getting a job won't be a problem i i i don't know too like too particularly what uh what specifically i'm going to do with as far as my degree, but the degree is very open and there's yeah. lots to be done. So I'm very optimistic. Sick, man. Yeah. Yeah. How many, uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, just one little tidbit going off that is uh, connections. That's something that people definitely don't miss uh, about Corona. Um, Cause you know, a lot of, a lot of baseball coaches, not like you're not getting seen because nobody's getting seen right now, especially for high schoolers who are looking at college recruitment. This is the perfect time to, connect with different coaches or find uh, different people on social media. I know I've already had, um, I actually had another guy reach out to me to, and DM me on, uh, on Instagram um, about something. So he's, uh, really? I forget, forget what his name is, but something about in dingers or something like that. Or I, daddy hacks, I think is his account. So daddy hacks. He wants, yeah, he wants to do something, but uh, that would definitely be something that I would encourage people to do uh, during this time when we're, some people are sitting around, especially in New Jersey. What, what's it like there? Because I know for me in my town, in Grays Lake, uh, a lot of the, uh, like, parks, pretty much all the parks are, like, shut down. But a couple towns over, like, 20 minutes away, like, everything's open. So me and my buddies have been practicing social distancing. And it's funny. We'll, we'll, we'll do some live ABs and have some of the pitchers pitch. My next-door neighbor pitches at Loris, which is a D3 out in Iowa. And, uh, yeah, I know. So, so it's been great. But sometimes we'll have cops pull in. And they'll just watch us for like 10, 15 minutes and check in on us, like make sure we're practicing social distancing and stuff. And then they just drive right out and don't say anything. Really? So, yeah, man. So, but what what's the situation in New Jersey? New New Jersey, if anything. New right. Jersey. All right, kid. Let's let's set the standard. All right, let's set the standard. All right, New Jersey, all right. not if, if not Jersey. Jersey. Right? <laughs> but, but um. No, it, it, everyone's on like crack cocaine right now. Everyone's like, <laughs> <out>. <laughs> everyone's like, everyone's like, like think it's like the end of the world. There's no toilet paper still, um, no lifestyle. Ah. There's no nothing, and there's no hand sanitizer, which doesn't like really make sense because yeah, hey, that's to fight like bacteria, and this is a virus. It's two completely different things because a virus is just a shell of DNA, and the, the bacteria is actually like, a living organism. So. People here are just stupid. Like, if they actually want to, like, help themselves, just wash your hands. It's really <laughs> Don't touch your face and wash your hands. That's how you don't get sick. Very Amen. Sick. 
<laughs> but yeah, everyone's everyone's freaking out here. It's like I, like in order for me to go to like the bank, which they have like people there, I have to like call. I have to call them, schedule an appointment, like, hey, can I have an appointment, like, right now? And then they have, this, like, the police, like, the security guy come open the door and leads me into, like, where, like, the, where, like, the window is. And then there's, like, a big glass thing, and it's, it's a pain. Wow. Real pain. That sounds like a huge pain, man. Yeah, yeah, everyone's everyone's freaking out and think they're going to die, but really, it's, they'll be fine. What is the, uh, how long are you guys on um, at home or whatever it's called? All right, so I've been That's falling. I, so I work as a law clerk right now. So I've been kind of and, yeah, so we manage estates and stuff. So I've been kind of very, following with the news very, very, uh, very thoroughly. And Jersey's kind of like the worst right now. Uh, it's, it's, it's like it's New, there, York's yeah. on the, New York's on the like on the decline. Uh, New Jersey's still kind of like hovering at the top. Um, so we'll probably be like the last state to get out. But I know like a bunch of states like Ohio and. Um, Minnesota, they're all beginning to open up, and they should be fine pretty soon. But I don't think we'll be, we'll be open until I don't think we'll start the process until like another month. So what is that? Yeah, so that's twelve weeks. So yeah, we're recording weeks. this on what April twenty first. So April twenty first, uh, the process takes six weeks to open up, right? It's, it's three stages. It was with a minimum of fourteen days. So it will take a minimum of about ten weeks. I would say a minimum. For geez, us. Yeah. Yeah, for for me in Illinois, we uh, we're on home like stay until April thirtieth, um, but I think that's going to get extended at least till May fifteenth, I believe. Really? Uh, yeah, honestly. Uh, but it's really weird because like for the summer, I was telling you like uh, I'm supposed to go out to Omaha to play Nebraska in the Corn Belt League, and like. They haven't had too many deaths in Omaha, and, like, the baseball facility there is still open. Just they can only have, like, 10 people in at a time. They're doing private lessons and stuff. So it's just kind of crazy because you have, like, New Jersey, New York, and some of the guys on the team, like, they literally, like, can't really do much. Um, and then you got, like, people in Nebraska where I'm supposed to go play summer ball, and they can pretty much almost do everything they want, which is pretty crazy. Dang, what the heck? Uh, yeah. That's pretty crazy. I know uh, Camastro Cam lives in an area my sister. Brooklyn. Lives. He, he lives in the er same area as my sister in Brooklyn. He's uh, yeah. Camastro's a guy on the team. Um, but Tony Camastro, bro. Precisely, man. But uh, <laughs> but my sister got like like she had like some some guy, uh, like rent a house so they could like get evacuated out of Brooklyn, which was kind of weird. Wow. Brooklyn, uh, the Kings County is kind of like the it's the worst county basically. Some that's, crazy stuff. That's, that's yeah. World's crazy right now. Oil hit the negatives. <laughs> no, I did not. Insane. We were sitting there, we were just watching the thing. We we're kind of cheered it on, like, oh, it's under a dollar. Oh, it's under zero. Hey, <laughs> what's what's gas by you right now? Oh, it was it was at like two oh five, but it's gonna get a lot lower. Oh, dude, we're we're at one sixty six. One sixty six? Yes, dude. They're gonna start paying you for gas pretty soon, dude. It, it's it's great, honestly. Like I have to fill up only once a week. Not even, dude. Like, it's awesome. I know when I went to go see Skylar, it was like 140-something. And that was like a month ago. Yeah. In northern Ohio, yeah. Northern Ohio? Yeah, That's northern Ohio? Ohio. Yeah, just outside of Cleveland. Like, half an hour out of, outside of Cleveland. What the heck? I saw I saw Cleveland hit 95 cents somewhere. Really? Yeah. Yeah, it's nuts. That's some crazy stuff. I mean, that, that's one positive, I guess, that we can take from this. Yeah. <laughs> Making the best of the situation, we're going to fill up on gas, baby. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Positive, baby. Positive vibes. Oh, uh, yeah. All right, well, yeah. let's uh, let's start wrapping this up. We'll finish this out. Um, I just want to give you the floor. If there's anything else on your mind or any wisdom, wise words of Mike Hardy that you'd like to, to drop on the audience. Don't be good, be great. Yes. Amen, brother. <laughs> Not, nothing else more needs to be said. That's just a lot. <laughs> Don't be good, be great. No. Well, Mike, That's great. it has been freaking great catching up with you and talking with you. I will uh, hey, sign you off, my man. Touch, man. Yeah, oh, very good. Yeah, dude, definitely. Uh, i say, yeah, yeah, man, we should hang out or check in or visit each other, but that's quite impossible right now. So yeah. that's about the hey, best we can do. Yeah, if you, if you want me to do something, let me know. Get the boys back on online. Oh, hell yeah. Love that. Well, Mike, yeah. 
Great talking to you. We'll talk to you later, my man. See you, dude. Peace out.